Hi, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, here to talk about one of the most commonly tested subjects that will appear on all your steps and board exams. That subject is biostatistics. Make sure to watch, subscribe, and like our videos on our YouTube channel, iMedical School, and wait to see our new podcast on iTunes. Every single USMLE step exam you will encounter throughout your training and every board exam in your career will test you on simple biostatistics. These questions are easy questions to get right, but so often we forget the formulas or put this material off until the last moment and miss these questions. Given biostatistics is so frequently tested and so easy to get right with a small amount of time investment, I thought I'd do a review to go over them. Let's begin by talking about why we order lab tests. These tests are supposed to help us figure out if someone has a disease or does not have a disease. Now you can imagine that company A may create a better test at finding all people who have a certain disease than company B, but company's B test may have less errors. So how do we tell which tests are better and in what situations to use these tests? We evaluate lab tests by sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. To understand these terms, we need to understand what are true positives, false positives, true negatives, and false negatives. A true positive is when a lab test is positive and the person tested has the disease. A false positive is when someone tests positive, but they do not have the disease. A true negative is when someone tests negative and does not have the disease, while a false negative is someone who tests negative but actually has the disease. Now that we understand these terms, let's talk about sensitivity and specificity. Imagine two bell-shaped curves next to each other with the middle tail ends of each curve overlapping one another. The curve on the left represents all the people in a given population who do not have a certain disease. And the curve on the right represents all those who have the disease. The way this graph works is that if you draw a vertical line to represent how good a test is at capturing affected members in a population, all the people to the right of the line will test positive and all the people to the left of the line will test negative. The best test in the world will be positive in only those who have the disease. But we can see that with the overlap between the two curves, that even our best tests will have some false results. To optimize and be able to compare our tests, we talk about sensitivity and specificity. A highly sensitive test is able to capture all the people who have the disease. This is represented by the line A, because to the right of A, we have captured every person who has the disease, represented by the curve B. Look closely. Even though we created a highly sensitive test, we have also captured a few people who do not have the disease. So, because test A is highly sensitive, we know that if a negative test results, it essentially rules out someone having a disease. But if this test A is positive, there's still a chance that someone does not have the disease. Again, sensitive tests, if negative, are great at ruling disease out. You can remember this by the common mnemonic SNOUT. S represents sensitivity, if negative, represented by N, rules out disease. We calculate sensitivity as true positives divided by the sum of true positives plus false negatives. Another way to say this is that it is true positives divided by the number of people who have the disease. Next, we will talk about specificity. Let's imagine test B is a highly specific test. Highly specific means that if the test is positive, the person has the disease. This is represented by line B. You can see that to the right of line B are all the people that have disease, with no unaffected people present. But if you look left of line B, you will notice that a portion of people will test negative but have the disease. So highly specific tests are good at confirming if someone has the disease, but are not good at screening for a disease. Remember the mnemonic SPIN. Specific tests, if positive, 
rule in disease. You can calculate specificity by true negatives divided by the sum of true negatives plus false positives. Another way to say this is that specificity equals true negatives divided by the number of people who do not have the disease. The next two terms are positive predictive value and negative predictive value. Positive predictive value tells us the likelihood that if someone tests positive, they will actually have disease X. And negative predictive value tells us if someone tests negative, the likelihood they will actually be free of disease X. You calculate positive predictive value by true positives divided by the sum of true positives plus false positives. Negative predictive value is calculated by true negatives divided by the sum of true negatives plus false negatives. Do not get these formulas mixed up with sensitivity or specificity. One final point that is highly tested is how sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value change as disease becomes more prevalent in a population. Remember, sensitivity and specificity do not change with a change in prevalence. However, as prevalence increases, positive predictive value increases, and negative predictive value decreases, and vice versa. Now that we understand and know how to calculate these terms, we can attempt some basic problem solving. Imagine a population of 100 people with 50 people having disease X and 50 people being disease free. Of those with the disease, 40 are true positives using test A, and of those that are disease free, 30 are true negatives using test A. What is the specificity, sensitivity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value of test A? Pause here and take some time to think this through, otherwise I'll start going through the answer. The sensitivity of test A is 80%, specificity 60%, positive predictive value 66.7%, and negative predictive value is 75%. How did I get to these numbers? Well. Whenever encountering a question involving specificity or sensitivity, make a 2x2 two two table with disease and no disease on the vertical axis and positive tests and negative tests on the horizontal axis as depicted here. We can include the total disease population in the top right outside the box like so and the undiseased population in the bottom right like so. Lastly, we can place the total people who test positive in the bottom left outside the box and the total people who test negative on the bottom right outside the box, like so. Once we have our table, we start filling in the information we know. We know 50 people have the disease, so I place 50 here, and 50 do not have the disease, so I place 50 here. In addition, we know that 40 are true positives, so that goes in the left upper box, as this is the intersection of the column of those who test positive and the row of those who have the disease. We also know that 30 are true negatives, so that goes in the bottom right corner. Now, if 40 people who have the disease are true positives, and there are only 50 people who have the disease, that must mean 10 people who have the disease tested negative. So we place 10 in the upper right box, as this is the intersection of the column of those who tested negative and the row for those who have the disease. By the same deduction, we know 30 people who do not have disease X are true negatives. So that means 20 people who do not have the disease are false positives. They do not have the disease but tested positive anyway. We put a 20 in the bottom left box. Now we have our 2 by 2 table all filled in. Now let's start our calculations for sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. Sensitivity is true positives divided by the sum of true positives plus false negatives. So true positives are 40 divided by 40 plus false negatives, which is 10. 40 plus 10 is 50, so 40 divided by 50 is 0.8 or 80%. Specificity is true negatives divided by the sum of true negatives plus false positives. So we have 30 divided by the sum of 30 plus 20. 
This is 30 divided by 50, which is 0.6 or 60%. So this test is 80% sensitive and 60% specific. Now let's do positive predictive value. Positive predictive value is true positives divided by the sum of true positives plus false positives. So it's 40 divided by 40 plus 20. So it's 40 divided by 60, which is two thirds or 66.7%. When rounded, we can say 67%. Negative predictive value is true negatives divided by the sum of true negatives plus false negatives. This is 30 divided by the sum of 30 plus 10. So this is 30 divided by 40, which is three fourths or 75%. In our next video, we'll go over absolute benefit, relative benefit, and the always important number needed to treat. If you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at iMedSchool or on Facebook at iMedicalSchool. This is Dr. K from iMedicalSchool, and I'll see you next time.